Today, we are on the third series of a beautiful series by Victoria Reynolds. This series is series three called Embrace the Struggle, and the book is Transcending Fear. Victoria. Yes. Embracing the struggle? Yes, we actually can learn to embrace our struggles. What a concept. <laughs> it is, and yet it's so necessary if we're going to get to a life that we love. Now, I came up with this idea of Embrace the Struggles after I read the story of a butterfly. I didn't write the story. I can't claim who did, so <laughs> it's a story that I read on the internet. And it's about a man who found the cocoon of a caterpillar. And he was waiting for the butterfly to come out, waiting for the butterfly to come out. So one day he decided he was going to help the, the butterfly when he saw it, it just poking its head through this cocoon. And it looked like it was having the hardest time to get out. It was taking forever for this butterfly to get out of its cocoon. So he took a pair of scissors and he cut the cocoon open to let the butterfly come out and fly away. What he didn't realize is that um, once the butterfly plopped out of the cocoon, it was never able to fly. It had this big old puffy body and it was never able to fly. And, uh, you know, he did a little reading and discovered that the struggle to escape the cocoon actually squeezed excess moisture out of the butterfly's body and made it light enough to be able to fly. So without the struggle, the butterfly was never able to fly. So without the struggle, we're not strong enough to face the challenges in our life. Yeah. And that's how we learn to see our struggles from a completely different perspective. So our struggles are actually what make us strong enough to face whatever the next phase is in our life. That's really amazing because we try to avoid struggle at all costs. <laughs> at all costs. <laughs> For heaven's sake, don't make us stronger. We whine and complain and are victimized and have pity parties. Embracing a struggle. Embracing the struggle. And what that really means is to be able to look at our past and extract what we can from it. You know, every struggle that we've been through in our lives, regardless of how painful it is, there's always a lesson to be learned from it. There's always something that we can learn from every one of our experiences. And when we're able to understand that there is something we can learn, then we can go back through all of our experiences and start to really learn from them rather than them holding us captive. Like the, the butterfly until it decides that the struggle, it needs to face that struggle to break through, it's held captive in its cocoon. So the struggle strengthens us just like right. it with the butterfly. Just like it with the butterfly. Yeah, and struggles are actually opportunities for growth. That's really true. When we raise children, if we don't allow them to suffer the consequences of their behavior, and struggle to make their own happenings, mm -hmm. they don't know how to cope with life when they grow up. They don't just suddenly become 18 and know how to cope with life when mom and dad have done everything for them. Right. So what a lot of parents inadvertently do is try to protect their kids from any kind of struggle. And in actuality, they're um, preventing them from being conscious, productive adults who get out there in the outside world and you have no clue how to handle adversity because you've never had to before. So they can't handle the struggle in life. Damn. They can't mature. Correct. Boy, that's so you have a lot of 30 year olds living at home. <laughs> so. And older because they never ever learn how to cope. They didn't have to learn how to cope. It's amazing. So many parents had a difficult life mm -hmm. and wanted to give their children the beautiful life they never had. Which is okay. And did, but so many of them in the process enabled instead of taught or strengthened. They enabled. Right. So, I mean, as adults, we want to be able to give our kids the kind of life we didn't have. I'm you know, one of those. I want to make sure that my kids have what I didn't have as a child and have a much better, happier childhood than I did. 
and also allow children to really experience life. It's, it's one thing to protect your children from harm. It's another thing to protect your children from making their own choices and experiencing failure. It, failure is actually a very important process of learning. So in embracing the struggle, give us some basic guidelines. How do you really look at that and say, oh, this big mess is wonderful. I just love it. How do you <laughs> well, it's not quite like that at some point. So I'll give you one example in my life. One of the things that happened that threw me into my midlife rebirth, as I now call it, it's like that butterfly that's come out of the struggle was the failure of my last business. Now, I started my first business in my 20s and my businesses were pretty successful to the point where they brought in a nice, cushy, comfortable six-figure income and I sold my businesses and got to sit back and relax for a while before I started the next business. And this last business just bombed. And it, it, was, a, it was a great idea. It was a brilliant idea. I still think it was a brilliant idea. Really bad timing and the economy basically put me out of business before I had a chance to really even, it really had a chance to prove itself. And I was devastated. I was heartbroken. I, because I love that business so much. It, I really thought it was my way of making an impact in the world. It was a day spa for busy moms like me. And I created this space where moms could come and do something nice for themselves while we took care of their babies. And I knew that this was a service I was providing women who really, really needed it. And so when that business closed, I was devastated. However, in that business, I had a partner who belittled me and made me feel about this small. And I cried all the time. As much as I love the business, I felt terrorized by my business partner. Now, part of that was me, because <laughs> I didn't know, I, I, I had some self-esteem issues and I had let her terrorize me. Um, but after that business closed, and I started looking at it from a new perspective, I was like, thank goodness that business closed. Because I was so unhappy in it. I, I love the business, but in the business itself, I was miserable. So being able to see it from the new perspective, I would never be who I am today and doing what I love and what I really love is teaching this. I feel so inspired and so excited when I see a woman's eyes light up when they start to see their own true possibilities. When one of my clients really gets their true value and their true worth, oh, that's worth everything to me. It fills me up when I see people change their lives and start to really fall in love with life. Had that business not failed, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. If that business wouldn't have failed, I wouldn't have had the time and energy to write my book. If that business hadn't failed, I wouldn't have the time that I have right now to spend with my children. So being able to look at what appeared to be a really painful failure in my life was actually one of my greatest gifts. So if we can look at it and accept the closing of a door, we realize with every door that closes, another opens. Yeah. I mean, and one of the other quotes that I kind of live by is that in every adversity lies an equal and greater opportunity. That's really true because an adversity challenges you mm -hmm. to learn. It's always a door, op the opening of, for something else. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a challenge. It's not a threat. And that's the key. If we're threatened by it, we're paralyzed. If we say, okay, do I go under it, over it, around it, through it, examine it, mm -hmm. dissect it, what can I do? Yeah, so, so you, can, you, you can see it as a challenge and say, oh, hmm, I'm not going to let this get to me. Right. So, yeah, regardless of how small that struggle is, it's a choice of what we decide to do with it and a choice of how we decide to perceive it. Ultimately, it's about perception. You know, past mistakes, that's part of this embracing the struggle is looking back at the past, but not only the struggle that we're currently in and seeing how we want to perceive it and what we want to do with it, it's looking at all of what were the perceived mistakes, failures, sins, whatever we want to call them in our past 
and extracting the lessons from them. In absolutely every mistake, every failure are lessons that we can learn that can help us become a better person, that help us become more of the person we really want to be. All of our life lessons are in there. We just need to look for them. So with every alleged failure, Alleged failure. Alleged failure. It's just a perceived a failure. It's a possibility of something bigger and greater coming mm -hmm. out of it simply by what you learned, what you observed, and an opportunity to go more directly where you want to go because now you have a new chance. Right. Right. And so it, what I started realizing is that as, as I started going back through my life at everything I perceived to be a failure or perceived to be a mistake, I started, oh... It's all about perception. So for example, there was one part of me that always saw myself as a quitter. Oh, I quit and run away from everything. That was a part of me that belittled me and kept me small and was negative. All I had to do was flip my perception, look at exactly the same circumstances and see myself as a survivor. When things got really painful, I figured out how to survive that. Same circumstance, different perspective. Exactly. It's all about how we choose to see it. We can look back at our life and see all of the failures and all of the mistakes and call ourselves all kinds of hurtful names and see only the negative, or we can look back through all of those perceived mistakes and failures and see all of the lessons that we learned from them or that we can still learn from them. And, and say, oh, well, in that, this is what I can learn. So you're telling me that we can look at a struggle and we can decide, a conscious choice, whether to let it weaken us or strengthen us. Correct. It, it all comes down to conscious choice. So you say, is this going to knock me out of the game and I'll go away crying with skinned knees? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to say, this is not going to knock me out of the game. I can survive skin knees. I'm going to come back like gangbusters. Correct. Yeah. A choice. It's a choice. I will overcome this. So one of the ways that I, that I really came to understand this was, for example, in this last business. I was perceiving myself as a huge failure because my business had closed. And then I had people coming up to me and saying, wow, we thought you were so successful that you were willing to do something so few people ever have the courage to do. Wow. And I realized, oh, it really is just all about perspective. What I saw was someone who was a loser, what everyone else saw was someone who was successful. And I just assumed, A, S, S, you and me, <laughs> I just assumed that everybody else saw me from the same perspective I saw myself. And I was completely wrong. Everybody around me saw me as a success. I was the only person that saw me as a failure. Because everybody around you could see that very few people had the courage to even go that far. Right. So that's why I was saying everything in our life, everything in our path, in our life, everything in our past, all of our circumstances are really our perspective and our perspective creates reality. So when you learn to embrace the struggles rather than being embarrassed about them, you completely change your life. This application can apply to bad relationships too, mm -hmm. can it? Mm -hmm. Can you give us an example how people can use this information to rectify, change, or leave bad relationships? Yeah, part of it is understanding again that it's about our own perspective. So when it comes to relationships, a lot of that is our judging ourselves by what we think other people think about us. Right. And as judging other people by what we think about ourselves. And when we really own that our perspective is ours, and by the way, other people don't think about us nearly as much as we think they do. <laughs> because they're far too busy thinking about themselves, right. just like we are. Right, right. <laughs> you know? They're busy with their own lives. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we go through life being so concerned about what other people think, and it's really about the owning our perspective of ourselves and not deflecting our judgments of ourselves off onto other people. 
So I found in some of my relationships, you know, I'm, I've been with my husband for 20 years and there's been some of that. I won't get into details, but there have been some times when I deflected my own feelings of inadequacy onto him, assuming he had feelings of inadequacy and it was mine. Uh, and, and in some of my friendships where I was judging my friends by the same context that I judged myself. And once I started to embrace that my struggles and my perspectives were mine, it, it completely changed my relationships because then I was no longer judging them by what I thought they should be based on my perspectives of myself. And once you do that, once you let go of the judgments of trying to make other people be the way you think they should be or make your circumstances be the way you think they should be, you start to see them through the eyes of less judgment and then you can make a choice about the relationship that's based in um, logic and reasoning rather than just illogical emotions. I've talked to so many women who have come out of broken relationships and they feel that they are broken mm -hmm. and they haven't been able to get themselves together and respect themselves and they feel like a failure because they never believed in divorce and now they're divorced. What would you say to these women when you say embrace the struggle? Um, a lot of those women come out of those relationships with beautiful children. Yes, they do. That you wouldn't otherwise have. That's true. Uh, a lot of those women come out with more resilience that they never knew they had. That's true. They come out with more strength than they never knew they had. Yes, that's true, but they usually don't find out it takes until... A, it takes a while to get there. Yes. But that's what I mean by embrace the struggle, is exactly. go back and extract, what did I get from this? What can I learn from this? You, know, you, you can't see it. When you're, when you're still in it, you can't see it. In every struggle or every death of something, so divorce is a death of a relationship, Right. you're going to go through those stages of remorse. Right. When you're in those stages of remorse, you can't pretend that you're not. True. You allow yourself to go through those stages of remorse. When you get to the other side of them, then you can look at it and extract the lessons from it. The important thing is that you allow yourself to go through those stages. And so many people don't. They, 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 it's like, oh, I shouldn't be angry. I shouldn't be angry. Yes, you should. <laughs> Just let yourself feel that. How many people have a death of something and they feel guilty about having any kind of emotion around it? Really allow yourself to move through that process of emotion. The more you, instead of trying to suppress it, allow yourself to move through it. It is okay to be angry. It is okay to feel upset. It is okay to feel remorse. It's okay to to eventually get to that place of acceptance. And then you'll have friends who will you'll have people who will say, well, how can you be so accepting of that? Well, you once you allow yourself to move through that grieving process, you do get to the place of acceptance. And once you get there, then you can look at it from a new perspective and extract the lessons from it that you can actually learn from to become a better person. So the message here is Allow yourself to be human and have your human emotions and be honest with you. Yeah. Because in that in itself is the beginning of finding your strength. So here's part, uh, another part of that butterfly story. Before the butterfly gets to the point where it gets its wings and starts to struggle its way out, part of the struggle exists even before that within the cocoon. So when a caterpillar is doing this little baby thing, as okay. we do, the caterpillar does this little baby thing and then it builds its cocoon around it. That caterpillar dissolves into nothing more than a DNA soup. If you were to open a cocoon, at one point in the cocoon there's nothing in there. There's no caterpillar, there's no butterfly. It's just DNA goo. Wow. Literally the entire caterpillar breaks down before it becomes something else. And I call that in, in human beings' lives and in, even in our collective reality as humanity, I call it the breakdown before the breakthrough. That's very fascinating. 
So before we have big breakthroughs in our lives, that freedom that we finally get to is that breakdown. That breakdown that may cause us to make that choice to leave that marriage. That marriage has to break down before you can get to the freedom that's on the other side of it. And that's part of embracing the struggle is seeing that that breakdown was necessary in order for me to get to where I am. So crying over the loss, grieving what you didn't have, accepting it and moving on is an important it's part an of It's an important healing. part of that process. Yeah, let yourself be human. Let yourself cry it out. Let yourself get angry. You know, don't go kill anyone or do anything that stupid, but, you know, <laughs> have it out with your pillows or whatever. <laughs> it's perfectly okay to be angry. Right. And let yourself go through that process. And you will feel so much better so much faster if you let yourself, yourself go through that. That is very good. When you're in that breakdown process, it literally feels like all hell is breaking loose. And in a way, that's what's happening. Because that hell that's inside of you is starting to break loose. And it, that is a part of the process in order for you to get to that place of peace that ultimately every single one of us is seeking. And embrace that as part of the process. That's part of the breakdown that happens before we can get to that place of peace in heaven, if you will, inside of every one of us. It's just part of the process. And understand that that's just part of the breakdown. So you mourn the loss of the business, you mourn the loss of the relationship, you mourn the loss of whatever door just closed. Right. And after your mourning, you collect yourself and look at who you are, what you are, and what you learned, mm -hmm. and embrace the process. Exactly. Exactly. So a big part of embracing the struggles is embracing change. So a lot of people, I mean, I, a good story behind that, I guess, or a way of saying is, it, is that the butterfly then needs to get to the point where it's ready to emerge and accept that outside of the cocoon is something entirely different that it's never experienced before. And if we're going to grow and become the kind of person we really want to be and grow to become the kind of person that deep inside is calling to us, so I think inside every one of us, there's something bigger calling to us. That's why we feel a nudge to begin with. And so if we're going to be that kind of person that calls to us or be have the life that deep inside we know we desire, we need to learn to embrace change. And a lot of people are terrified of change, not understanding that change is exactly the opportunity they're looking for. You know, one of the stories I use when it comes to embracing change is the, is the importance of being flexible. And it's like a rubber band. If you don't keep a rubber band flexible and it just sits there for a long time and you go to stretch it, it snaps. Have you ever noticed that? With, yes. Yeah, it, it literally falls apart because it's not stretched and it's not used. And so embracing change is really important to get, to get you along your path to where it is that you want to go. And one of the things that, I've, that I do is create intentional little changes along the way so that when the big changes come along, they're not so painful. They're not so difficult to face. There's, there's less resistance to them. The only constant is change. And being able to embrace that constant change rather than trying to force things to stay the same. Because as long as we try to force things to stay the same, guess what? Nothing ever changes. <laughs> Nothing ever changes, so you're miserable and unhappy so forever. You're miserable and unhappy. I don't want to change anything. Well, then you're not going to change anything. <laughs> so if you want your life to move in the direction you need it to go or that you desire for it to go, you need to understand that change is a vital part of that process and embrace that. And there's going to be some struggle in that. You know, I know so many people say, I want to make more money, but I don't want to get a new job. Oh, I really don't like changing jobs. Do you want a better job and more money or not? Pick one. Or do you want to stay where you're comfortable and miserable? Most of them will <laughs> stay where they're comfortable and miserable. So then they really don't want a no, better job and a better life. they're afraid of the responsibility involved in changing. 
because change is scary for a lot of people. Change is very scary for. And a lot yet, of if you want that life that you say you want. You need to be willing to embrace the struggle that comes with trying something new, with with venturing out of your comfort zone. If that butterfly never faced the struggle to get out, it would never be a butterfly. But the butterfly gives a lesson too. He doesn't just pop it over and jump out while he's weak. He takes one struggle at a time and overcomes it and strengthens himself and keeps his balance and keeps his health, keeps his sanity all along the way. Mm -hmm. And in that aspect, we should be able to deal with almost anything in the world because like you said, change is the one eternal law of physics. <laughs> <laughs> Life is a continual process of change. That's it. That is really a marvelous thing to tell people though, to embrace the change because the future and tomorrow depends on your capacity to cope with change and with just challenges. Right. So if you get bogged down in fear, then you can't face the change. I think it's fear. Fear. That's why I wrote the book on it. Yes. Because it's, that's it. Fear, fear is the fear. only thing that stops us from yeah. anything. Yeah. Transcending fear. The fear that you won't make it. Well, you won't if you won't try. You're guaranteed. Right. The fear that you can't be anything, well, you can because it's, it's innate, it's built in you. The challenge wouldn't be facing you if you didn't have the capacity to deal with it. That's what they don't know. Mm -hmm. It really wouldn't because yeah. every person is more tenacious, stronger, and wiser than they think they are. Unless we step out and start living and taking our own strength and having our own courage mm -hmm. and be willing to make mistakes and say, everybody makes mistakes. It's a learning process. I'll do it again. I'll do it better. I'll do it wiser, but I will do it. Right. I, you know, and it, it, you know, one of the things to think about is that little baby, the first time it takes a step, it's, it's not perfect. The first time it takes a step. What if a child said, Oh, I tried. I'm not gonna try again. <laughs> Been there, done that. I'm not going to try that again. No, a little baby gets up and says, oh, I am persistent and I'm going to make sure I figure out this walking thing. Nobody's perfect at anything the first time. They ever. That's a really great example because so many adults don't have the courage that baby has. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> because they're so afraid what everybody else is going to think. That, that fear of failure, that fear of perceived judgment stop so many people from ever being who they were really born to be. So you embrace that struggle. I yeah. can enjoy the challenge. I can enjoy what's in front of me. And when I'm through, I'll look back and say, I did that mm -hmm. and I can do more and I'm okay. Precisely. Great message. Yeah. Thank you. Great message. Thank you.